In drastic times like these, sometimes the best thing that we can do is simply be heard. But it's not as easy as it sounds. After all, we aren't all extroverts. What makes someone speak up and speak out? Do you know the power of your voice or the voice behind a movement? Today I have on a fellow podcaster and we speak about finding your own voice and learning how to speak for yourself. This is the Speaking with the Shaman podcast, and I'm your host, Joseph Watson. Laren Gaines, how you doing today? I'm doing good. Doing good. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. No problem, man. I, I, so today we're talking about finding your own voice. And I wanted to have Laren on because it seems that me and him both went through this pandemic and ended up making a podcast. Him based out of Trenton and mine based out of Hamilton. So today, I just wanted to speak about and go in a little bit more on like what caused you to do that, because it takes something, it takes someone a very, it takes much confidence to step out of your shell like that, and then not even speak out, but broadcast yourself, you know? It's funny you say that um, confidence because that's something that I basically didn't have. So I basically did have to find my voice. And um, I believe that it just came from a higher power, honestly. Um, I always tell, you know, everyone out there who's viewing me and watching me that it's bigger than me. Um, Something said, just get out there and do it. Um, When coronavirus happened, you know, I was stuck in the house, stuck watching the news and running through it over and over and over and over again. And I was like, all right, am I going to like, make myself go crazy here or am I going to just stop and do something different? I feel like we were all put in that position to make that decision for sure. Yeah. Like I have to do something and I kept asking, so what is it that I'm going to do? What is it I'm going to do? What do you want me to do? Pretty much is what I kept saying. Like, God, what is it that you want me to do? And I put a book together full of quotes and scriptures and themes. And, you know, it's like a musical journey and um, the process of putting that all together, picking them out, selecting them, typing them up, getting it all set, Mm -hmm. reviewing it, editing it. It actually changed my mind. It it was a a tool used to help get my mind set in the right direction. Absolutely. Faith is a wonderful thing that many people lean on and go about throughout their life to find that balance. Um, Like any religion, do you mind me asking? Because in the future, I would love to have faith leaders on of every faith. Uh, What Do you practice any specific one, or were you kind of just... Uh, going with the more powerful movements of a broader spectrum of them. Yeah, I mean, I grew up uh, Baptist, but I'm not going to say that I'm necessarily, you know, linked to that. No, I totally understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just out there searching, you know, and there's a higher power, and I believe in God, and, you know, that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah, and that's that's one way of many to go about this. Um, I, I completely agree with you. There's... So there's something about these times where there's just complete unpredictability that people are need something to rely on. And that was one of the things of why I started mine. It was basically like, all right, everyone's running around like a chicken with their head cut off. Mm -hmm. Like, what can we do to regain some sort of order? Even if it, and I'm not talking about a country, we obviously couldn't take it. It's not like I'm going to like make a YouTube video and just going to change the world, you know? Right. And that's why I focused around community based because I know friends. I see group, large groups of people every now and then that I talk to that it, it's nice to uh, stay in touch with. Mm-hmm. And we obviously all talk, talk amongst ourselves. And I kind of think of it like the butterfly effect, where if you do little simple actions like this, maybe that'll trickle down into the effects of positivity in the people around you. I'm trying to understand where you're coming from with that. So (laughs) to tell you something, um, everyone laughs, but I really don't watch movies, really. So So when you say the butterfly effect, I know what you're talking about, because, you know, that was a movie, right? Yeah, it's also an actual thing that happens in life like if you if you move a rock down the line that will have effects you know okay okay i I just remember the movie coming out (laughs) no no that's what i mean by the butterfly fly effect is every every action has an equal 
reaction to it. Right, right. And th- maybe it's like a couple people, like we what were talking put, about earlier. Yeah, like what you put out there is what you get back. So, Absolutely, you know. yeah. And um, and it's funny because when you talk about religion and faith, they all, well, on my journey, I realized that a lot of them tie in together in a roundabout way. Like Buddhism. Oh, abso- absolutely. Yeah. Because um, I was searching at one point and, you know, at one point I thought that I was going to, you know, up, you know, Buddhism and um, something made me get back in line, like all kinds of hell broke loose after I decided to step out and go in a different direction. And that's a whole nother story. People say what they say. But yeah, when I um, decided to do something different, like my whole world got shook up real bad and I had to get back in line but looking at it I was like hmm, I see the correlation on this one I see the correlation here and that's just between the two and I'm sure like when I look at other faith leaders speak and they bring everyone together on a on a world yeah. format I'm like I'm sure that there's some correlation Re- religion them. and politics which I'm sure we'll get to down the line is a very touchy subject nowadays it's hard to speak on It's easy to get canceled by, and that's the last thing, obviously, someone like me or you wants, Mm -hmm. is to no longer have the ability of free speech and to talk. Um, It's it's a touchy subject, and I, in my own personal understandings, have done it more as a study of the outward looking in, and then taking those principles and making them into self-fulfilling principles rather than from this third party Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's been a weird journey walking through and seeing all of the disputes when again it does make that full circle in the sense of there are certain religions that fight over what prophets were the actual most important the message is still the same yeah and I mean, look how long the King James Bible is, look how long the Torah is, look how long Mm -hmm. the Mahabharata is. I think they all cover that general basis of how we do well, live well, and also rellaying the honest experiences, good and bad, on life. And the the bottom line is that those have been out for a long time, and yet we still can't get it together. And that's the... (laughs) Yeah, that's... But that's why things like this start. Like, that's Mm -hmm. why these open dialects help people understand it more. And I guess I'm coming from a neutral perspective while you're coming from one of the sides of it. And that's why I do want to have faith leaders on. Mm -hmm. I'd love to talk to a priest. I'd love to talk to a rabbi. I'd love to talk of a leader of the Muslim religion. I, it's all a part of our society and we all live together at the same, at, at the end of the day. Right. I agree definitely agree so what kind of in like has your family been that throughout time um i actually tell people um and it's the truth that um i didn't grow up in church i grew up in music so you were telling me that the other yeah, day when we were yeah. talking um my grandmother um the matriarch of the family basically was going to church every sunday and brought everyone in and she basically had a stroke and had to you know slow down a little bit so when by the time i was sorry born, to hear that yeah she's uh going on to glory now so but this was you know me growing up younger, rest her like, soul um what five six years old she had slowed down at that point mm-hmm. and um so i just basically watched her you know worship and everything from inside the home and but, it, it's an extremely fulfilling thing to do in your life and i'm not against religions it's just not for me but it does bring a large mo- number of people in life true happiness and fulfillment and contentness. And it's a wonderful tool to have if you choose that tool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So by the time I was younger, like all of the older, my brother, sister, they didn't have to go to church every Sunday. They were probably like, oh, I got to get up and go every Sunday. And, mm-hmm. you know, the cracking the whip and everything on them to get them up. But I didn't experience that. So I just basically watched, you know, the um, Sunday services on TV gotcha, and things like yeah. that. And she was very um, adamant about getting up in the morning and praying and praying at night. So I witnessed all of that stuff. So I believe that that's where, you know, my... That regiment. Yes, came came from. Gotcha. From yeah. 
So, so what are other, some other uh, important influences in your life beyond spirituality and what, well, faith? Like I was saying, music. So um, since I didn't have that part, um, I basically grew up in music. My mother was a avid uh, record collector. So I grew awesome. up with the, the vinyl and the 45. So music is definitely... Um, you know, a major, major, major part of what I do. Yeah, mu- music for me as well. I was just telling you about my recording studio out in Denver. Mm. Um, my first episode was with my mentor and a person I call Sensei, who taught okay. me how to DJ and got me into producing. And then I, he ended up getting me some of my first shows. And he's been that huge influencer throughout yeah. my whole life in that. That's what's up. But that was our first episode. And music is... A, a universal language. Every, everything to me. And when I think about the journey that I've been through, it's always been music that has helped me get to exactly where I'm at here today. And with that, it has allowed me to connect to my higher power as well, because some of the artists that I listen to, they know how to do it just so well. You might be listening to that hip hop and R&B album, but at the end of the day, they have to answer to a higher power as well. I got and you. they have to give credit, you know, where credit is due. So music is everything. How do you feel about Kanye's Sunday services? Um, I don't really. I don't. Uh, I'm. I don't really. Um, I haven't actually paid attention to to that so much. Okay. So I just. I've seen I know it. it's such I've a, a huge couple, thing now. But. I saw a couple, you know, clips here and there, but I really haven't zoned in on it as much. Gotcha. To be able to, you know, speak about it uh, confidently. So, gotcha. Yeah. So, uh, what what are some artists that have had touched? your life in that sense that you really enjoy. That's, that's funny. I <laughs> love talking about this topic, but uh, Mary J. Blige. Um, I know you did definitely. a tribute to her on one of your podcasts the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, I was actually speaking to her today on someone else's podcast, but yeah, now Mary J. Blige definitely um, is a true, just everything. Um not like that, like God or anything like that. No, I definitely no. don't want to say that, but um, I idolize people. I definitely, well, you know, we're, we're, people, person that you look up to. Yeah, my music mentor. That's a that's mentor. A there, you there you go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I remember being a little kid, um, going through some stuff. You know, we go through the bullying, we go through the the situations where our parents don't have things right, and we Absolutely. are subjected to uh, whatever is going on in the world. And um, that's all I had at the time. So definitely got to give it up to Mary. And the fact that she has longevity and has been around for a long time. Yeah. As I continue to grow and have um, issues with work and my own family and stuff like that. It was like the she knows how to put out music for the right time. The time that we're in. I get what you're saying. So there's always something you can go back to and be like, yeah, I can play that and I can do that. That that." is a beautiful thing to know how to use your words in that sense. And uh it's a rare gift to mm-hmm. very few people that get it. But uh, tr- I feel the same way about, um, so, I don't know how much you're into uh, rock music, but Tom Petty. Has, I don't definitely know who he is. Tom yeah. Petty has that same thing that mm-hmm. just surpasses boundaries and really goes for the person. We in some tough, tough times right now. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. But what, like you said, it's lay down or get run over at this point. Mm-hmm. And... It's about having, it's especially about having these hard conversations right now, because if we don't, that's what's leading to our demise, for sure. And I'm going to go to the Bible just a little bit. Please. Um, And I don't know much, so, you know, there's so many people out there who know it and probably like, well, he's saying it wrong or this or that, the next, the other. I just pick up bits and pieces. Yeah, because remember. No worries. I didn't didn't grow up in, in church. I grew up in music. But it might be the end of the world for them, but it's not the end of the world for me. So you can take it however you want to take it. Yes, the world is crazy, but it's going to be the end of the world for some people, just not for all. If you got your mind right and you are treating people with respect and you're following those rules and you're following those guidelines, I think you're going to be okay. So yes, there's all kinds of hell and there's all kinds of drama in the world. And yes, when you look at the Bible, some people say we are in the end times. Mm Mm-hmm some people and they've said that they're in the entire ever it's always the end times it's always been for some people yeah not not for everybody no i I get exactly what you're saying 
Oh, man. And you can't help people at the end of the day. You, you can create a podcast. You can get out there and you can broadcast. You can hold up signs. So you can do whatever you want to do. I'm the opposite. One thing that Laren knows, because I've been through it with experience, is that you cannot change people. I've been trying to do it all so my life. I disagree because I have changed people. Oh, this is good. I'm so glad that we are going down this path because I truly believe and I know it that you only thing you can do is change yourself. You, you can't can, change other people. You can change yourself, but you can make you can imprint on someone for sure. It's in our bi- biology. Let me let me give you an example of how I I've learned. I've been in about four relationships that actually count. You know, we go through things here and there, little teenage things, but four long term relationships that actually count, right? Mm-hmm. And in those relationships, most of the time. Most of the time, <laughs> most of the time, I have picked people who were not up to my level. They weren't on the same level. And sometimes when you merge with people, you can become upgraded. You have children as well. I do. I have children. Um, I'm jealous. I'm at, at that age where I'm starting to catch baby fever. It's horrible. Be very careful. Oh, I know. I, I love I my, don't I have love my children yeah. and I would never change a thing, but... Um, there are some lessons behind it. You have to make sure you pick the right mate is what I'm trying to tell you. So here more than understand that I have, I see. I So (laughs) you get upgraded whenever you link up with somebody, you can either upgrade your life or you can downgrade your life. So for me, I've allowed people to upgrade by attaching to me. And in some cases I have been downgraded. You know, you have to, it's a get take. That's what a relationship is though. It's a give and take process. I have not, taken that jump of marriage or so I can't say that I empathize with you, but I absolutely sympathize with you and understanding the Right. Yeah. So with that, I'm also in the opposite perspective of I've witnessed my parents be together for 37 years in a happy relationship and not all happy, but they've stayed together right. and dug out and did they put in their work and they did what they more had to do. than right. Yeah, they're like on the top of the list of like some the best relationship that I've you would look up life. to and be like, Absolutely. okay, I would like to be like, and that's that. what I want to yeah. reproduce, right? You know, so I so they're 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 still doing what they should do, and that, that they're doing their job, yeah. Um, but anyway, so you either go down or you go up, and in the case when I felt that I was going down, I'm like, let me try to teach someone and show them how to do things my way, or how I became successful on my job or how I became successful there. You don't have to be me, but Mm -hmm. you could be successful in your own right in your own job. And with that, maybe it was just my delivery. I always would say, um, you know, my message was very clear, but my delivery was horrible. Um, Like what I was telling you was the truth, but how I said it was incorrect. Like maybe it came across with a nasty tone or screaming or yelling or whatever. But I've learned that out of those four relationships, those people that I've been with, they change for just a little bit, right? To, I, I, my new thing is to get along with the get along, to appease and make everything okay, right? But at the end of the day, they didn't want to do it because they reverted back to the old self, which therefore, again, you can't change people because at the end of the day, they're going to go out and they're going to do what they want to do. I think that's a very cynical way of looking at it. And I think maybe <laughs> they're going to go out and they're going to do whatever they want to do anyway. If you had the bump heads about, oh, well, paying bills are important before but I you feel go like and do you, this. I feel like that's more of a them problem than them and listening rather than I feel like certain people you truly can touch and change to be the better. I've had many experiences. People yeah. have been that influence to me. Like. Okay, I, I will give you that. Yes, but are you? But for me, I'm not willing to take a chance out there and continue to try to change people. I've done it four times in a row and been slapped in the face a thousand times. And 2020 was the last time where I said, "Absolutely not, I will not do it again." And that's understandable, and I get it. Yeah. Only thing I could do is change. And my uh, friend used to always say, "Laren, you know what? People are who they are, and you have to accept them for who they are. And if you don't like something," All you have to do is change yourself, change the environment. You don't like it, get up and get out, move. You can change people, but how you change people is by changing yourself. So even though something may not work out right and it may not work your way, instead of beating the drum and going along with the plan, you can change yourself. And when you change yourself and you do something different, like I'm not going to keep going back and forth with you about something that I believe is right. 
Mm -hmm. something that you believe is right. So I'm not going to go back and forth. But what I am going to do is I'm going to change myself and either I'm going to remove myself from the situation or I'm going to focus on this. I'm going to focus on that. And if it's the right person that should be in your life, they will change to conform. And and that's what I'm saying. There you go. So you're absolutely right. That's what I'm saying. I don't mean in the sense of like we, when we have huge amounts of followers, we will be able to change people. I mean, you can have serious touches and people... In moments in l- life where they will look back and say, I need to do something different. Yeah. Because I'm doing it wrong right yes, now. Yes, there you go. So, all right. So, so uh, uh, we agree. All right. right. <laughs> I'm glad we agree. I'm glad we yeah, agree. Yeah. So, so now go ahead. All right. So you also are, were saying that you have children and you're also gay. So how has that played a little into yours and their lives? Um. Well, it's, it has not been an easy road. It's been rough. Um for all of us. It's been rough for my family as well because it's been a decision that I decided to change my life, you know, seven, eight years ago. Okay. Um, because I come from, you know, the eighties generation where um in the African American community and still today in some small pockets, it's not acceptable and you were called every single name in a book. Yeah. Except by what's on your birth certificate. Yeah. So. So um, I went were, through all of that. Were you in the closet most of your life or was this a decision that came about more recently? Well, just to uh, give a little bit more perspective. I basically it actually triggered a lot of mental illness with me. Um, How so? Because um, I knew I had these thoughts as a young child and I fought them because before I even knew who I was. Everyone in the streets knew knew who I was and said stuff about me before I even know who I was. So you're a little kid riding a bike and somebody looks at you and say, oh, that kid is gay or he's this or he's that or he's a punk or he's a fag. He's mm. just that. I had all of that stuff playing in my mind before I even knew who I was, before I was even thinking about being anything. Gotcha. So that messed with me as a kid. So I'm like, no, I got to put on all of this armor and I got to fight back and I'm going to fight back and let you know that I'm not. So that little young dude that was on a bike and getting pushed over and knocked over and in fights and all of this stuff, um, I had to suit up and I had to come with it. So with that comes a lot of anger, comes a lot of fighting, comes a lot of mental stuff that's going on, and I had to push it down. So I said, I'm going to grow up. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to conform to what everybody wants me to do, and I'm going to raise a family, and I'm going to show them that this is how I become a man. Do you feel like our generation kind of got... Not sold out, but the fact that past generations weren't given that knowledge of free thought like we have nowadays that it, in turn, literally held us back right. to progress right. until recently. And now you see not only technologically, but huge progr- progression in thinking yeah. and new terms, Is it, words it, being rewritten, mm-hmm. the, Language breaking down, being built back up. Yeah. 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 So the message that I have, um, you know, definitely is anybody who is struggling with that to really just, it's okay. Sometimes you got to separate from people. Absolutely. Sometimes you need to move like, and I know it sounds so bad, but I've had it happen to me where if you feel like you're the black sheep of the family and things are just not right, sometimes maybe that's just not your family. And I, I know it's rough. I They're, get that completely. Like I said, change, right? If you get yourself together, maybe they'll get together around you and say, you know what? I do see things in a different way. But to sit there and stay stuck and go along with somebody else's plan, I've been doing it all my life. So now that I'm 40 years old now, I'm finally saying, no, I'm not going to go along with your plan. I'm going to, you know, do what I want to do finally. And to give a little bit more perspectives, unfortunately, it does happen in the sense of you don't get accepted in that sense. And it's still up to you to continue to push down that path because you can't stop the true you. Right. So I'd get that completely. And here we go. It's full circle. That's basically how it happened. Like my my executive producer, you know, I say my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, my executive <laughs> producer was like, nah, we're going to do something different. You ain't going to do that. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to block this. And you think you're going to do that? I'm going to block this, too, and I'm going to block that, too. And I had to sit there and get it together and say, okay, all right, I guess I'm going to come out the right way. And he brought people in my life to help me get it together. So I can't say that every relationship was rough and it was horrible and it was this and that. People come into your life for a reason and different seasons and for stuff sure, like yeah. that. And, you know, that's that's it. But, yeah. But for, for people who struggle in the African-American community, I get it. I understand this. 
not easy. And I wanted to segue into a little bit more of the Af- African American community in the sense of why do you think it is as rough as it is right now? Uh, racism. I don't want to use. I don't even like using the well, word. Ra- I, I believe in racism, but it, we need to stop just. It's funny that you slapping it onto everything, and we need to have the full blown conversation rather than. But that is part of it, though, because it, you have yeah. to struggle just to be accepted in this world, period. Absolutely. Because of the color of your skin. So now, why would you add another label on top? I've had a hap- I've had family members. I say, feel like a lot of the African American community is more self degrading than. Well, yeah, we we do have that pocket. Like again, you get both sides. You do have. Good versus evil, and you got ignorance and people who have it well together. So and when you say African American community, we have to be careful because there are a select group of people who got it together and they don't appreciate what their neighbors are doing that look just like them. Like you look just like me, but you ain't acting just like me. But that, but the exclusivity, the tribalism, the it's such a culture of just what seems like. Um, just angst and petty hate sometimes it it's people i still t- think it, shunning them shunning their neighbors away rather than i feel like it's so individualized there's not large communities of african american people coming together and like truly they, embracing not one thing but the beauty of it it's yeah, a, we need to get back to that. And I think this is a time where there are small pockets, maybe even large pockets. We just don't know. But pockets or groups of people who are actually focused on that. See, everyone focuses on the negative stuff. So what we see out there is just the ignorant side of it. We don't see what's happening on the other aspect of it. I get you completely. And I'm not to, I, I don't mean to say that as a generalized statement of like the large group. I. It just hurts to see it i guess br- more so broadcasted in that exactly light. and that's and what like I, you said that's when, what i mean when we it's, first started like um if you're not hating on somebody if you ain't speaking something ignorant you're not going to get that much shine but go out there and make fun of somebody and say something about the way that they look or you know what they were doing last night or whatever on on the gram and you're gonna get a bunch of likes that way immediately you're gonna go right to the top the culture of it worries me as well. How, how do you see the broader spectrum of African-American culture symbolized? The um, symbolism is what worries me. The yeah, most. I feel like a lot of things are we're at a delicate moment where a lot of stuff can be lost. And we again, we really need to go back. Yeah, I don't mean to come off as like looking at it dystopian, mm-hmm. but we're such a strong and beautiful race of people. But it's almost like all like a lot of us don't treat us like it yeah. and it's i get there's hate of the past and what's happened to us but the hugest thing is moving past that mm-hmm. and continuing to realize ourselves rather than it's the, resent the past it's i feel like we it's a culture of resentment in past things that has happened to us that holds us back the most but at the bottom line it starts inside of the home with your own tribe I get that completely. It does. It starts at home and we got to start there first. So if everyone out there who cares about anything, cares about preserving culture and cares about, you know. So I was listening to a podcast of yours on this exact subject in the sense of African-American families in single parent homes. Mm -hmm. And like that's a, a huge high percentage of a lot of how families work. Like, right. Why aren't those bonds there what what is forcing us apart in that sense is it that resentment is it i'm i'm i'd love to hear another's perspective to speak on it it's a hard subject but we need to i would say the reason why the household unit is not what it should be is because the generational curses aren't broken like it takes a strong person to be able to break something so if your parents come from divorce Nine out of ten times, you're going to get divorced. Nine out of ten times, your children are going to get divorced. And, and if you're not the one to stand up and straight up and show them, now we can do something different. So now, for example, for you, since you've had an opportunity to see something different, yeah, 
you've broken that generational curse. So now it's you're not going to go down that whole path. So it's a bunch of things that have been happening time after time, dating all the way back to, you know, the beginning, slavery and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Some of the whacked out ways that we were living back then, we got to break it. So it takes every single person, every single man, every single black man to Absolutely, say, okay, hey, yeah. listen, I'm going to do something to, different. I, I'm going to break it. I'm I wake up trying to be the best person that I can be every day. And that's why I'm actually here speaking. That's why I have the 411 podcast, because I wanted to show my children that is we could do something different because I never wanted them to grow up and marry somebody who was dysfunctional yeah. like their father. Like, and, no, and because the, that's what happens. It but, happens all the time. But these are the hard conversations that I'd like to pass down mm-hmm. to the people. And like, yes, like maybe I did say some controversial stuff that people might disagree with. And I agree with you. I'm ignorant to a lot of it, but this is why, why we talk it out. This is, it's, it's to spread understanding and for the people that are listening, they're also in the perspective of zero mindedness and sub of the subject. Right. This is how we spread that wisdom. Yeah. You got to stop and be the person that says, I want to do something different. Even though um, my mother created the circum, I, I have a quote that says your mother and your father created uh, your situation, but you were born to change it. They may have created it and that's fine, but that doesn't mean that you have to go along and follow exactly behind them. Absolutely. Because if that's the case, then I'd be a raging, alcoholic, crazy, uh, drug-induced person running around here ripping people's face off. But Mm. I decided to do something different. It's a roll of the dice. So that's that's basically it. Mm. So... Let's get on a little brighter subject. Like, what what do you want out of your podcast and the po- or the positivity that you want to go to people well, to speak on? You know how deep it can get. Now to go to how do we fix this? So I do understand that um, once you start to step out and start to speak about stuff that's important, like mental illness and you know the the path that we went down on, you have to be able to uplift people and move it in a different direction. So Absolutely. I, I do it with the music and we start off, um, you know, light, you know, light music, party and music, you know, whether we listen to Jay-Z or whether we listen to, you know, Kanye West or Beyonce or, you know, Pink, whoever. And then we start to get into the heavy topics and then we start to discuss whatever we want to discuss. And if we, Get an all time low. So you try to low. create a vibe in the room, and then yeah, we get an all time low. Then we need to be uplifted, and it's very important that you are very mindful of what you're listening to, Absolutely. the people who are around you, yes, the music that you're listening to. So I pick certain songs and certain things to, you know, tell a story behind it. So what I would like to see, um, I just wishful thinking that all of this is gone, and you know we can get back into the the venues and stuff like that. I would like to, you know, get on the road and do some live four on one podcasts. That would be have, awesome. Yeah. Have a I'm, live always, I'm, I'm always so trapped in the moment of like, I was actually thinking of going to some local businesses and doing some work as well. Yeah. yeah. But during the coronavirus, because this business topics and stuff like go to a bar. Yeah. I got invited to a bar mm-hmm. and to go do one, but go before it opens and then. Right. Right. Yeah, but I, that's what I envision, and just you know, bringing people in and having a musical journey, speaking about things. You know, what did this uh, song do for you? Uh, what was going on in this year? You know, I do something called Song of the Day, where we basically reminisce and we go back in time where it's a good time. So even though it's jacked up right now, but I want you to go on this musical journey with me, and I want you to just reminisce and, and get in your mindset and get in that nice comfort zone where you were like, yes, I remember that it was a good time, nineteen eighty six or whatever i felt real good i was yeah you know partying in the club or i was doing this or doing i have so many people that reach out and say you know i remember that i was doing this or i was doing that so that's what i envision just an escape for people i couldn't agree more yeah. and again we're still trying to find ways to do that right now and yeah. we're still here for you like share and subscribe like yeah <laughs> um, i'll have all your information up at the end of the video for sure so Let's end it on what's, how important is podcasting in COVID-19? I didn't know how important it was. 
um, until people started to reach out and say, oh, my God, I can't believe that you started this. You helped me like um, you're my only outlet at 10 o'clock at night. This is my only adult outlet. Um, and it does seem like the news media is truly breaking down in mm-hmm. in a fashion of there is cor- in corruptness, in trust and yeah. trust is, and let, a, let, trust let alone everything else. Yeah, yeah. Tr- trust is the main thing. And I think. I hope that people see people like us and truly do sign on because we are telling you the whole truth to what we can find out. We're not here I'm to spread lies. I'm telling so much truth that, yeah. listen, sometimes I get off and I'll just be sitting there staring in the mirror sometimes like, Laren, did you really go in and you say that like you did? And I know you're going to upset some people. You might yeah. upset some family members. It is what it is, but I can no longer hide behind anything i've been hiding for so many years i told you my story um and then let's get into corporate america i've been hiding about who i was sitting there being a puppet for you going along with stuff that i really don't believe going along with the corrupt nonsense that's a whole nother conversation about how they want to keep people down and, and keep them down um that i can't do it no more i can't hide i can't lie so i just speak the truth and sometimes i'm like you really went there i i feel like podcasters are the new American shaman in the sense of, yes, there's been media. Yes, there's been TV. There have been people on cameras, but podcasters have relinquished themselves of that outward effect. Mm -hmm. And they've taken on the people of their world and truly tried to channel them through and like get the best essence to show people of the world, the facts and reality of their culture. Yeah. And that's what a shaman is supposed to do. Like they're the ethno culturists of the world. And that's why that's why we have speaking is speaking with the shaman as the name. There you go. I, I feel like all of us are playing in a role of revitali- revitalizing and reimagining our culture and world around us. Do you believe that you were um, destined to do this? When you look at your life and how it's stacked up, I you do see it? tons of stuff though. Like I, I do, I work with a clothing brand. I work with a music studio. I do trading in at wall street and in the crypto markets. And then skills are a whole different thing. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very masterful in a lot of the arts and skills that I do. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this is just another one that I added to that, Mm -hmm. but it's not like the core shining key of this. And I'm doing this more for therapy and fun than I'm doing this to really try to raise a platform. Like I hope that it gets to a national level, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to be sincere about it rather than trying to market it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I get the whole therapy part. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely helped me as well. But it's funny because I never said, oh, I want to be a podcaster. I never said that I wanted to do this X, Y, and Z. And it's funny that I was pushed into it. It was only until the breaking down of the community and the coronavirus when I wasn't getting out. And all I was doing was watching podcasts, trading online. And I, I would basically wake up, turn on a podcast like Lex Friedman or the Dark Horse podcast with Brett Weinstein and Heather Haying or Joe Rogan experience or, Mm -hmm. and I would literally, or I got to say, uh, Eric Weinstein to the portal. I still want you to come on. (laughs) I I will say that as many times as I possibly can. That's my number one goal for a guest, Eric Weinstein. Um, but it, you know, you watch the world collapse underneath your feet and then you're looking at media sources whether it's CNBC or MSNBC or CNN or Fox or your local channels, mm-hmm. it would just dissolved all in front of me. And I was like, these people that have their podcast and aren't under the restrictions of people that are funding them and their experience are saying what's need to be said. And shout out to D- the Dark Horse podcast with Brett Weinstein and Heather Hang. They're ethnobotanists and, well... He's an ethnobotanist and she's an animal behavioralist, mm. but their links to the uh, world of doctors and universities has given them insights that they are now rel- relaying to other people of actual factual lab tested stuff that has 
been in the coronavirus field that they're getting direct lines of information from, from and putting out. That's one of the reasons why I started my podcast, because this is information is key mm-hmm. and there needs to be a continuous flow of that information. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. No, I, I agree 100 percent with all you're saying. It's all good. All good stuff. Yeah. So why don't we end it on that? Laren, it was a wonderful conversation. We'll absolutely have you on again. And wh- you, uh, tell the guests a little bit about your podcast and where they can find you at. So um, I broadcast on um, social media networks. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and Periscope. Um, the handle name is at Laren Gaines. So that's L-E-R-I-N-G-A-I-N-E-S. And I go on every night at 10 o'clock. And also on Wednesdays, I go on at 8 o'clock. And I have a segment called Reading Between the Wines. So with that, hmm. that's actually how it actually started. I started with Reading Between the Wines first. We were just testing and playing around last year in the summertime. Um, I wrote a book, uh, My Inspirations, and I was just sitting around. And um, I'm like, I'm having a real jacked up day today. So I went over to my friend's house, and she's like, well, bring your book. And and I'm like, all right, I'm going to bring a, a bottle of wine. So we sat there and, and basically was just playing around and setting up the cameras and stuff and that's how it was birthed so that's on awesome we- on wednesday that's night awesome. at eight o'clock we come on and we do reading between the wines so and any, any other night it's at 10 o'clock but on wednesdays we go a little bit early sip some wine um it started with inspirational um readings and stuff now we just basically have opened it up for everyone so we have all kinds of um authors come on and poets and all kinds of great stuff people come on and read and have a good time and it does get a little out of control, of course, once you have some uh, wine and alcohol involved. So well, I drink the wine my friend uh, drinks with. Parent me. advisory. <laughs> yeah. yeah, parent advisory on all of my shows. <laughs> Laren, it was great having you on. Have a wonderful day, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Take care now.